Hey everybody, it's Ripley. We're in 7-2 now. More fun with inverse trig. I love these things. I think they're freaking cool. I think they're fun little puzzles. So um, here's, here's the question. We know this, right? We know that the sine of the inverse sine of x equals x when x is between negative 1 and 1. We know that the inverse sine of the sine of x equals x when x I got a little ahead of myself there, didn't I? When x, when x is between negative pi halves and pi halves, right? We know that the cosine of the inverse co. Ooh, I just kind of gave you a little preview there. I know that the cosine of the inverse cos of x equals x when x is between negative one and one, and that the inverse cos of the cos x equals x, <clears throat> excuse me, when x is between 0 and pi. Last but not least, we know that the tan of the inverse tan of the inverse tan equals x for all, wow, I'm really getting ahead of myself today, aren't I? Equals x when x is between negative infinity and infinity, and I know that the inverse tan of the tan of x equals x when x is between negative pi halves, that's a less than, not less than or equal to, um, is between negative pi halves and pi halves. Now, by the end of the day, what I want to do is I want to define this um, for the secant, the cosecant, and the cotangent. But I also want to play with what happens if, what happens if I have the sine of the inverse cosine of root 3 over 2. What's this equal? Well, let's do this thing really quickly. Okay, let's do this just for fun. Because really, once you've done a couple of these, you can do any of them. Now, the first thing that I do is I look at this piece, this thing right here, this piece of information. I say, okay, that's an angle. Now, I'm just going to call it alpha for lack of a better term because I've got, I know that lowercase Greek letters imply angles. So I do this thing just a little bit at a time. This is the way my brain works. Your brain may not work the same way, and that's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to ignore the sign for a second. All right, so I've got to be real careful with my notation because if I throw equals in where they're not equals, then Ripley ends up landing on me with both feet. You know the drill. All right, so I know I can write this out as the inverse cos of root 3 over 2 equals alpha as opposed to infinity. Well, I'm digging my infinities today, aren't I? Now, that may be something that's really difficult for you to wrap your brain around. So what I do is I just use the inverse property and I think to myself, this is true if and only if the cosine of alpha equals root 3 over 2. And now my brain is like, oh, that's so easy. That's perfect. Let's see. Cosine alpha equals root 3 over 2. When does that happen? When does, now I can throw it in my calculator if I wanted to and put it on degrees so I can get my brain wrapped around it, or I can just think to myself, oh, that's easy. I've, I've memorized these. These are part of the fantastic um, four, or excuse me, the fantastic five points in the first quadrant. Well, when is that? Cosine, let's see, it's adjacent. It's, oh, that's right, it's pi six, right? Now you also may say, but Ripley, it's negative pi six as well. Let's do that parenthetically, and we'll discuss why that's wrong, all right? Because on the unit circle, we know that the cosine of pi 6 and negative pi 6 is root 3 halves. The problem is, remember, arc cos or inverse cos only spits out values between 0 and pi. And negative pi 6 ain't between 0 and pi. That's kind of helpful, isn't it? Okay, so let's see. We got alpha equals point or pi 6. So now I'm just going to stuff alpha, because that's all that this was, right, back in, and what I'm looking for is the sine of pi 6. And the sine of pi 6 is 1 half. And I'm done. So guess what? My answer is 1 half. Let's do another one. Um, let's do the inverse tan. And my brain's already like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Inverse tan can only spit out values between negative pi halves and pi halves. So I will be very, very careful here. Um, Let's do the inverse tan of uh, the sine of, I don't know, pi fourths. Okay? Now, 
That's kind of an interesting one. Now let's let's think about this. This is going to equal huh? Now sine of pi four spits out numbers, right? So I know what the sine of pi four is. It's root two over two. So the inverse tan of root two over two, right? Because that's all that the sine of pi four is. I don't have to do this fancy alpha thing here because this is the sine, not the inverse sine. You dig it? All right. The 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 Inverse tan of root 2 over 2. Now, that's really what we're looking for, right? So what that's saying in my brain, I start thinking about this as the tangent of huh equals root 2 over 2. Well, here's the problem. Remember, tangent, its fantastic fives are only values like 0, 1, root 3, root 3, 2 root 3 over I'm sorry, yeah, <laughs> 2 root 3 over 3 and infinity. That's not a clean one. Well, we're not afraid, right? That's where we grab our calculator. Remember, don't be afraid to grab the idiot box when you absolutely have to have the idiot box. Look, I'm simply going to plug in. I'm going to second quit. I'm simply going to plug in the inverse tan of root 2 halves, and let's see what happens. All right, so I'm going to go second inverse tan. It's the one that lives right above the tan of this one's a little tricky to do with this pen, right? And then I got to move it over to tell that I'm done. I don't know about the new OS. It kind of bugs me. All right, and I'm going to hit enter. Oh, I better be careful. 0.615. What? That's not an angle that I've really seen before. Let's check my mode. Oh, I'm in radian mode. So if I crank down and I go over to degree, just because sometimes it's really good to have our brains wrapped around degree, right? I'm going to go second entry. It's going to give me the same entry again, and let's see what the degrees are this time. Oh, 35 degrees. I had no idea. All right? That's kind of cool. So the moral of that story is you're not always going to get pretty clean values like this. In fact, you rarely will when you start with an arctan. However, if I go, let's see, the cosine of, uh, uh, let's see, let's make it interesting, the inverse tan of negative one. Let's do that guy. Okay? See what happens. So this is what I'm looking for. The, the, I swear to God, you guys, this section is so much easier than the last section once you've got your brain wrapped around it. Okay? So back to the, back to the grind. I know that that is an angle, so I name it such. It just keeps me out of trouble. And if I name it like that, I can start thinking of it as the arc or the inverse tan, I keep saying that, of negative 1 equals alpha. So tangent of alpha, there's my infinity alpha again. I'll call that alpha infinity. That was stupid. Let's see. So tangent of alpha infinity equals negative 1, right? Now, okay, wait, 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 wait. Tangent inverse tan only spits out angles between negative pi halves and pi halves. If I go up here to my good friend, all students take calculus. Well, negative pi halves to pi halves is, is fourth and first quadrant, right? So I know that tan spits out negative values in the fourth quadrant. So let's see. What doesn't that tell me? The I know in the first quadrant, the tangent of pi fourths is positive one. So I have to know that the tangent of negative pi fourths is going to be negative one. So I know that alpha equals negative pi fourths. Okay? That's what this guy is, which implies that I can rewrite this as the cosine of negative pi fourths. What is the cosine of negative pi fourths? Well, the cosine of pi fourths is root two halves, or root two over two. I know that cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. All students take calculus, right? So this is just going to be root two halves. Now watch, watch, watch. Let's prove it. Don't take my word for it. All right, where's my calculator? Where's my fancy calculating machine? Let's go back up here. I'm going to clear everything. Clear. All right, now what do we have here? We had the cosine of the inverse tan of negative one. So I'm going to go cosine of inverse tan of negative 1 and some parentheses here just to clean it up. You know me. I'm a little bit crazy. 0.7 now. So let's see. What is that root 2 halves? Well, I don't know. Let's check. You can always double check by the way it is. But it is what it is. And then I'm going to divide by 2. And let's see. Hallelujah. Perfect. We got it. So you can use your calculator to check these things. Okay. All right. Enough said. Um, now, as promised, let me give you, let's talk about these guys just real quick. 